This movie tells a story about Australian superstar singer Helen Reddy. The film begins in 1966 when Helen Reddy arrives in New York with her three-year-old daughter, a suitcase, and $230 in her pocket. She had been told she'd won a recording contract, but the record company promptly dashes her hopes by telling her it has enough female stars and suggests she has fun in New York before returning home to Australia. Helen, without a visa, decides to stay in New York anyway and pursue a singing career, struggling to make ends meet and provide for her daughter. There, she befriends legendary rock journalist Lillian Roxon, who becomes her closest friend. Lillian inspires her to write and sing the iconic song I Am Woman, which becomes the anthem for the second wave feminist movement and galvanizes a generation of women to fight for change. She also meets Jeff Walt, a young aspiring talent manager who becomes her agent and husband. Jeff helps her get to the top, but he also suffers from a drug addiction, which gradually turns their relationship toxic. Caught in the treadmill of fame and dependent on Jeff to manage her professional life, Helen finds the strength to take control of her own career and keep pursuing her dreams. This movie suffers from a dull, cliché sodden script which insists on squashing Reddy's career into a predictable biopic narrative arc and struggles from the get-go to portray her as a feminist icon. In doing so, the film slides over what was really defiant about Reddy. Reddy's feminism expresses itself as an ordinary, everyday faith in her own value as a person and a performer, but the film's corny storyline constantly renders her as naive and passive, exploited and humiliated by her cocaine-huffing husband. The film does try to strengthen her feminist character credentials by giving the third substantial role to Danielle McDonald as journalist Lillian Roxon, a fellow OC expat presented as Reddy's best friend. But here, Lillian is not much more than a narrative engine. This is the kind of thankless sidekick part used solely to applaud and shite the protagonist and then provoke tears upon dying prematurely. For a supposedly feminist project, it's a crappy treatment of female friendship. The movie is also conventional to a fault, recounting Reddy's musical trajectory with a road complacency, never endeavoring to locate interesting swells in a personal narrative that could justify the effort. Nothing is critically examined to a great degree. Nothing about the actual specifics of Reddy's feminism, or the socio-political climate that helped propel her success, or the actual substance of her music-making process, or even her musical choices outside her most popular song, I Am Woman. We see Tilda Cobham Harvey perform several of Reddy's deeper cuts, but how and why they came to be in her catalog of hits is never touched upon. This pedestrian biopic doesn't really convey the distinctiveness of Reddy's appeal, let alone package it in a way likely to trigger a significant revival of interest in a major star largely forgotten now. Why she was able to propel herself to the top while in this movie, we have no idea. The movie never gives us any background how Reddy suddenly write the song I Am Woman, which appears to have dropped whole from the sky as presented here. Had Reddy written songs before, or why didn't she do it later? Never explained by the movie. Then suddenly it's 1982 and she's playing Vegas. It's not even noted that by then her formidable run of hits had been over for 5 years. Instead, the film is more concerned with Reddy's problematic marriage to her manager Jeff Walt, which took a turn for the worse when Walt became heavily addicted to cocaine and started mismanaging their savings. Reddy's painted as little more than a nice woman with a nice voice and a bad husband. Feminism is frequently in the background, yet Reddy too often feels a passive participant in her own story. Overall, this movie is a letdown.